Hi, I'm Lori Barnes here to talk to you about the upcoming Pisces New Moon. It takes place this Sunday, March the 10th. It will be early in the morning if you're on the West Coast of the United States. And it happens about an hour before the daylight savings time changes. So it's at 1 a.m., but do keep in mind the time change. If you're on the East Coast of the U.S., the New Moon is going to happen at 5 a.m. in the morning. And if you're in Rome, Italy, or Central European time, where I'm broadcasting from, it's going to happen at 10 a.m. in the morning on Sunday, and it will be at 20 degrees of the sign of Pisces. Since the new moon is the beginning of the cycle, you'll want to do your new moon intentions in the actual new moon phase. So make sure that you pay attention to the times that I just shared to be sure that you write your intentions once we've entered the new moon phase. I recommend doing your new moon intentions on Sunday. If you don't have your natal chart placements memorized, it's best to have your chart in front of you while you're listening. Look at the houses that I'm going to talk about today or the signs that occupy the astrology houses for Pisces, Aquarius, and Taurus. By the way, a shout out to all you Pisces out there. Happy birthday. New moons are about new beginnings, growth, action, refocusing, refreshing something. It's the rebirth of a new cycle and it's when the sky is dark. It's also a good time for rest and quiet time as you move out of the last cycle into the new cycle of growth. The new moon is in Pisces. Pisces is a mutable sign. It's changeable, adaptable, and flexible. It's great at pivoting and responding to what's right in front of you. What can be more challenging for Pisces is to stay on a rigid schedule or to take proactive action towards starting something. Pisces is one of the most intuitive signs of the zodiac. It's very sensitive to the emotions of others and the environment surrounding them. And we have a lot of Pisces energy to tap into right now, and it can show up as feeling drawn to spiritual and metaphysical experiences, which is a quite lovely way to work with Pisces. And it also has to do with helping others. There is this characteristic about Pisces where there can be a tendency to overgive, to over caretake. So do watch out for things like that that could show up for you over this weekend. For example, if you've become so focused on helping someone else, you may forget about what you want for yourself, your own needs. It can become serious when you take on another person's hobbies, likes, dislikes, food choices, how you spend your time. So do watch out for if you are taking on somebody else's likes and dislikes to the detriment of your own. That's why you sometimes hear Pisces described as server suffer. So if you find yourself in this type of situation where you're overgiving, this new moon is a good time to make a change. Set some new healthy boundaries and break out of outworn habits that don't serve your personal well-being anymore. There are lots of positive attributes of Pisces like empathy, intuition, ability to connect with others, having compassion for others, being nurturing, artistic, creative, having a sixth sense of knowing, and altruism is also something that can be associated with Pisces. Pisces is a sign that likes to unify and merge with the whole. That mantra, we're all one, that's connected to Pisces energy. Pisces is a good sign to tap into the collective unconscious under this new moon this weekend. Pisces is mystical, dreamy, and creative. It's one of the places in your chart where you want to look to find creativity in your chart or the ability to intuit things or have intuition. The Pisces part of your chart is going to show you more information as to how this is going to show up personally for you because there's 12 different astrology houses and where Pisces is in your chart can call your attention to those topic themes and people that are likely going to be more active for you under the Pisces new moon. I like Pisces energy because it can help you or it's a good time to tap into this energy to visualize where you want to go. It can be this fantasy world that could be unrealistic, but it can also show you a grand vision of what you want to manifest, your big goals, and what it looks like when you've accomplished it. It can be an opening to creativity that you may find elusive in your day-to-day -day life. So daydreaming this weekend would be a good thing to do.
and tap into this Pisces energy. And we can learn a lot about Pisces by looking to its opposite sign, Virgo. Virgo is a sign that's practical and realistic. It's going to be about the details for manifesting your vision. So these fantasies and visions that you can concoct under the Pisces energy can only come true if you put in the time and effort. And Virgo tells us or cautions us or reflects from the other side the detailed work that needs to be done day by day in order to manifest your dreams, your Pisces dreams. Now we have Saturn in Pisces and also Jupiter in Taurus. Those two planets are helping to ground this energy. And this is great for Pisces season this year. Remember that every year we have a Pisces new moon, but that doesn't mean that all of the other planets are in the same place. So this year, having Saturn and Pisces really helps to ground whatever big vision you're having. It helps bring in that realistic component. Saturn is about doing the hard work, but in a disciplined and structured way. At first glance, we may think, well, this sounds like Saturn is in foreign territory and it doesn't really sound like a place that Saturn is comfortable, but I see it as an incredible combination that can be very useful for you as we move into the new moon this weekend. Saturn is where we look to build something solid that's going to last for a long time and it requires effort. And aren't our big goals and dreams just that? So what a nice combination to be able to visualize what you want to manifest with an eye on stability, practicality, reality, and strategy. That's what we get with Saturn traveling through Pisces. Now, Jupiter is also traveling through an Earth sign, Taurus. And Jupiter is important because Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces. Pisces is one of its signs. This would be another sign that any kind of visualizing or daydreaming that you do right now could actually lead to a practical plan for manifesting it. So dream big, dream big with this Pisces energy and also plan to achieve that big vision with strategy, thanks to the helpful energy that Jupiter and Saturn are bringing along under this Pisces new moon. The planet Neptune is also in Pisces. It's fairly close to the new moon by degree, and this can add on an extra mystical layer of dreaminess to the mix. With Neptune there, the caution is that not all may be as it seems, and it can be harder to distinguish between fact and fiction. So as long as you know the difference, who cares? Enjoy it. Under this Pisces new moon, dream away your best vision of yourself, but don't stop there. Incorporate some reality-based planning too. How are you going to take this big dream and make it a reality? Embrace this hard work that you have to do to manifest your vision as much as you embrace this dream, because very little in life comes without putting in the work. It's really nice how we have this combination of energy, which really supports daydreaming and fantasizing and visualizing what you want, your big goals, but also having that grounded practicality and reality for seeing how would you actually get there. I hope that you take some time this weekend to relax and let your mind wander. Do this in a pleasant environment. You know, like where do you like to go? If, if you had a, a place that you could escape to for some relaxation, where would it be? The park? Would it be pulling out a, a good book? or going to your favorite coffee shop, going to the beach? What would you do to find that place where you can really relax and let your mind wander? And then do it, go there. And there's one thing that I recommend that you stay away from, and that is escaping into any type of addictive behaviors or substances. You have to know yourself to know where you may be getting into territory of escapism that's unhealthy. Be careful and stay away from that type of escapism. This Pisces new moon encourages relating with others, helping others, and having intimate, empathic relationships, but in a way that doesn't suck the life out of you. If you feel like the opposite, like you're a victim because you're always catering to someone else or something else, constantly having to give up what you want to do in your free time or having to eat something different, wear something different, learn something different, or even the job that you do. If you're doing that to please someone else, it's a sign that you could be overgiving. Do a check-in with yourself. Do you feel exhausted? Do you regularly feel exhausted and drained from overgiving? Because if that's the case, it's a good time to set healthy boundaries and stick with them. That would be a good new moon intention for you under the Pisces new moon. However, you may find yourself on the other side of that, where you may feel like, 
like you're not giving enough, not compassionate enough, maybe feel like you're overly self-focused and haven't really extended yourself out in a caring and compassionate way to those who are in need around you, then you could consider opening up more and kind of easing up on those boundaries. You want to take an honest look at yourself and decide, is a change in order? You know, am I balanced? Am I imbalanced? And in which direction is that imbalance? And then how can I bring healthy boundaries into this new moon cycle? It's all about self-care and setting healthy boundaries. So think about that. Pisces energy all by itself can be changeable, intuitive, creative, mystical, wanting to merge and unite with others. It can fall into service or victimhood and could prefer spending all the time on spirituality, fantasy, and daydreaming. However, we don't just have one zodiac sign activated. There's always other signs occupied by the planets. And we want to look at the synergy of the planets in the sky right now and how they clarify this new moon energy. So we'll take a look at a few planets and what's going on with that. Mercury, the planet of communication, just entered fire sign Aries, and this indicates that there's a spark of creativity around communication and ideas. There continues to be a significant of planetary energy in the fixed signs Taurus and Aquarius. This energy is breaking up the status quo, and this has been going on for a while with both Uranus and Jupiter traveling through Taurus. Also, we have Mars and Venus, and now Pluto in Aquarius. Out of this disruption, this breaking up of patterns. There can be a little bit of chaos, but also what comes is new solutions, new routines. You may see something in your life that it's kind of like the way it's always been is now getting broke up, opening new space for a different way of doing things. And Aquarius is really all about doing things differently in a way that benefits the masses or large groups of people. And with relationship-oriented planets, Venus and Mars in this sign in rational Aquarius, problem solving is on the agenda. And then we bring in powerhouse Pluto. It just entered the sign of Aquarius. So we're all adjusting to this revolutionary approach of Pluto in the world. Then we look back over to Taurus. Taurus, which, which is where Uranus and Jupiter are, Taurus energy, it really likes to plod along. It resists major change. It's about keeping the status quo going. But with visionary Jupiter traveling through this sign and change-oriented Uranus, Really, resistance is futile. Change is going to happen somewhere in life. Change is happening. In the sign of Taurus, there's this practical and realistic tone to whatever solutions come along. And these two signs, Aquarius and Taurus, and the planets in these two signs are challenging each other to make progress, to revolutionize change and break up old patterns that are no longer working. But this energy is personalized in your chart and you'll find out more when you look at your chart and look at where the houses that contain Taurus and the houses that contain Aquarius and Pisces, where they are, because that's going to let you hone in on the topics, themes, people that are activated by the Pisces new moon. When we think about the pace of time under the new moon, all of the planets are moving forward this month. So you can take advantage of this underlying quality of time, which is all flowing direct. That being said, Mercury is going to enter its pre-shadow phase on March 19th before it goes retrograde on April the 1st. During March, take this time and wrap up new things that you have recently started or you're in the process of starting. So when we get into April, you can take a little pause and look back to see how much progress you've made since the beginning of the year. April is going to be a great time to review what you've accomplished so far this year and give you a chance to revise and realign your priorities so that you're ready for the spring and the summer. I have a few ideas of activities you can do under the Pisces new moon. The first is to do your new moon intentions near water if you can. Pisces is a water sign. So if you can go out to a ocean, lake, sea, pond, anywhere where there's a body of water or a, a fountain, like if there's a fountain somewhere where, near where you live, you can go sit there and write up your new moon intentions near water. And if you can't get away or there's no body of water near you, you could take a bath or you could have one of those desktop fountains that you could run and do your new moon intentions with that. I also have a free guide and I will link to it in the description below. 
and the guide is about how to set your new moon intentions. I would definitely try to take some time this weekend and allow yourself to daydream and fantasize. Let your mind wander. Imagine the steps that you would take to achieve that dream. You know, is your dream realistic? And how can you update your dream and vision to be realistic? Another thing you can do is something of service, whether it's helping out a friend or volunteering for a cause, anything that you can do under the Pisces new moon that helps others, that helps provide a service to others would be a good thing to do under the Pisces new moon. Take an introspective look within yourself. Is there somewhere or, or something that you're over giving to? Are you sacrificing your precious time on others, someone else, to the point where you're losing focus on your own needs and desires? Or are you on the opposite end where you're too rigid when it comes to helping others and you could benefit from being more compassionate? It can help you feel better. It can bring joy and peace from within. It's a great time to set some intentions around resetting the balance between your own needs and how much you take care of others. A reminder that if you struggle with any kind of addictions, stay away from environments that entice you to use or overuse. Set some intentions under the Pisces new moon to seek healthy alternatives to any type of addiction. Creativity is heightened under Pisces energy. Do something creative like paint, play a musical instrument, dance started a new creative hobby. And if you do, you'll have Saturn in the mix to help you stick with it. My last idea is to watch a fantasy movie like Star Wars, my favorite, but anything, any, any movie that you can kind of escape to another land that inspires you. Speaking of inspiration, I have an inspirational quote for you that syncs up with the Pisces new moon. The only people who get upset about you setting boundaries are the ones who are benefiting from you having none. Let that sink in for a moment. Healthy boundary setting. That's one of the best things that you can do for yourself under this Pisces new moon. For a short recap of what we've talked about today, the dreamy Pisces new moon reminds us to be caring and compassionate people to others and ourselves. Very important, compassionate towards yourself. Notice if you're overgiving, leaving you exhausted and empty, or if you could benefit from opening up and being more caring and compassionate with others. Daydreaming can open up your deepest desires. And if you add in some realistic goals for how you're going to manifest those desires, you may find yourself motivated to manifest your dream into reality. Daydreams can come true. And with that, I'm wrapping up today's video. I really appreciate you watching today. If you enjoyed what you heard, I would appreciate a like and a subscription to my channel. And if you want to book a consultation with me, I have a link below. I'll see you next time. Ciao.